Hey Jonathan, uh, sadly at this time I'm still booked up. Uh, the way things are looking, I probably won't be taking on anything till fall winter. Last year just messed everything up, so you figure I missed about almost all of last year because of the lockdown and all that other stuff, so. I mean, uh, you just keep in contact with me until I'm ready to start doing stuff again. I, I just have way too much stuff here. No, I won't have a list until I'm ready to start doing stuff again. Uh, last year, just it was just a mess, so... You figure I didn't do anything for a year almost, so... I tried, but it was difficult. And the reason why I don't do lists is because some projects go fast, some go slow, and uh, it just doesn't work out that way. Nope, Daphne is uh, right here, still working on her. She's a, uh, it's gonna be a long one. It's only, uh, I only work on her on Fridays for the stream, so. And hopefully uh, Sunday I'll have video 2 of Velma up. I just have to edit it.
Yep, uh, Daphne and uh, Velma are probably going to be uh, uh, set up together and they'll be up for grabs when it's all done. Um, usually, I think the way things are going to start working is uh, Patreon to get first dibs. And if nobody from the Patreon group wants to snag it, it'll go up on my site. That's for, that's for like, you know, live stream items and uh, Patreon votes and stuff like that. Any other random stuff I do outside of that will just be like thrown up randomly. It's all about figuring out how the best way to go about it this year. been trying to get a lot of commissions done or at least get caught up on them some projects are delayed because of supplies I can't get certain paints uh, some of the stores don't have uh, materials I need so just when I think I'm ready to get caught up, something delays me again. But uh, Velma's coming along pretty well. Um, third video, at least the material is almost finished, but that's going to be a while before I uh, edit that video. But yeah, Velma's coming along pretty well where I'm almost ready to do the hair. Um, I can, uh, well the Patreon should be in the description to this video right now, at least I think it is. Uh, yeah, it's there. Um, and as far as that's, you know, it's, it's still new. Uh, I'm still asking people questions and we're still trying to figure things out. It's more of just to support me, it's not... It's kind of hard to do any kind of like tier perks. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of like patrons can like vote on certain things that I'm going to do. Like say if I find a broken statue and there's three characters I would like to make out of it. The patrons can vote for one of those characters. I think that's kind of like where I'm headed with it. And I think sometimes if I'm ever looking to get rid of personal items or stuff, I can post it up there first. Uh, it's kind of like trying to find the best possible way to do it. Because, you know, other guys who do like 2D drawings, they can give everybody like copies and it's kind of hard for what I do. So we'll figure it out as we go. Hey, what's up, Matthew?
hoping to get Miss Marvel done fairly soon. I think if I get all this done tonight, uh, maybe by next stream we'll finish her up. Uh, Ninja, um, it's hard to say. I, I don't time my projects because I work on so many at a time. Uh, so if I paint this item, instead of sitting there twidd twiddling my thumbs, I'll go on to the next item. So I have a lot going at once. Uh, so it's kind of hard to say, actually. You know, if I'm uh, if I'm painting skin tone on three items, I'll mask them all out one morning and then I'll paint all three that day. Instead of sitting there just painting up one item and then trying to do something else, you know. Because some items could go longer, some can go shorter. It all depends on if everything's going right, if there's no hiccups. Uh, just, you know. So I don't sit there and like time my hours. I find that just a waste. Uh, Jonathan, I my goal is this year I need to redo my floor. I need to pull up the kitchen. Uh, when I bought this house, it came with these really crappy uh, floor uh, stick-on things. And I need to redo it all. So my goal is to redo my floor. And then uh, sort of bring that kitchen floor into the TV room with tiles. And then after I do my statues and build better displays, I can do a, a better job of my uh, collection. As of right now, it's just a mess. I only have like three best of cases and a corner case. And 
all that's really in there is uh, my Power Girls, uh, Captain Marvel's, Kid Flash, and uh, or some other random things. Hopefully next year, after the Power Girls come out from Sideshow, I'll have a better display where I can show everything off. I don't have like, you know, 50 statues, I just try to make my single grail characters, and that's it. So it's not like a theme to the collection, it's just favorite characters and that's all I want. Although I have to add uh, my Hyperion to my collection, I gotta, I gotta get that Superman Premium format. And I'm going to make my Earth-X Hyperion. So that'll be added to my setup too. I have the best of cases, but the center best of case that holds up the TV, I want to get rid of that and build a different display in the center. And So I got, I got a lot to do. Got to focus on some other stuff first. I also got to paint the Nate Gray. That'll be added into my collection too. Hopefully I'll have that in there next year. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot I got to get done for my own stuff. It'll get there someday. I don't have anything crazy like, you know, LED lights or, you know, anything like that. I'm pretty just simple. Spend more time in the studio than anything. Hey, how's it going, Terrell? Hey Jigsaw, yeah, we're not doing much right now except masking, so once the tedious work stops, I'll be able to start painting her up. It's part of the painting process. Yeah, it's actually a nice day today. Went for a walk. Uh, nice and cool, but not too hot. Except everything is green, so my allergies are killing me. Need a day of rain. And I got done cooking a bunch of sauces and peppers for a barbecue tomorrow. So, house smells good with all that being cooked up. Once I uh, paint her up and afterwards, I got a statue we got to kind of show off and get some opinion on people. 
something I'm doing a little bit of test painting for someone. See if you guys like the idea. Uh, Jonathan, I have like, I have a few statues that are just, you know, statues I like that I collected. Like, uh, I have the Sideshow Emma Frost, the latest one. I got the Sideshow First Black Canary. And then I have the Sideshow Second Wonder Woman premium format. Um, but most of them that are one-fourth scales are customized. I got, I got my four Power Girls that are customized. I got my Captain Marvel Genis Veil from Prime 1. I got my Phyla Veil, Captain Marvel. And then I have my Kid Flash. Um, and then on my little tiny uh, corner glass case, I have a couple like Bowen items. Uh, you know, like Bombshell, Jesse Quick. And little things here and there. Oh, Terrell, you know of that barbecue tomorrow? Yeah, should be a fun day. Hey, what's up, Raphael? Be good to get out of the house for a while. Meet some people in the hobby I haven't met before, stuff like that. Jonathan, I used to have, when I first bought this house in 2012, I had tons of stuff. Like, I had pop culture shop, Bowens, all kinds. But then when I lost my job, I did the Great Purge. And I went down to pretty much nothing. And I'm slowly building up my personal grails. And that's it. Yeah, I like the first Canary, too. I, I like that one a lot. That's why uh, I'm customizing her into um, uh, Velma. Because I think it's... Uh, I think everyone didn't like it because of the uh, hand. Her right hand on her hip. But other than that, I like the statue. It's a playful pose. It was well sculpted. So it's just one I kept for myself. The only problem is that since it's got the um, fishnets, I can't really uh, repaint it. So I'll never get those fishnets back on, so I just left it alone. Yeah, Ray, see, you're always going to see booty shots with my videos and streams, since I, most, I like to do the females the most. I'm not going to hide it. They got the curves, and uh, it's fun to paint them up and customize them, so. Wait till you see Velma's booty shots. <laughs> that, uh, I did the skirt. When I when you see part three video, when I get that posted, you think you'll get a kick out of that booty shot. That, uh, I really went all out with that one.
Well, thanks for stopping by, Jonathan. Have a good one. Hey raccoon, how's it going? Let's look this over one more time, and then we can start painting this up.
Yeah, this one they went overboard with the booty on her. But I guess that's uh, Campbell artwork for you. Uh, before I start painting her, how do we have a bunch of people in chat, or is uh, we kind of spread out at the moment? So I'm working on an Iceman testing paint up for my friend who is making one, and I figured I'd get some feedback. And if you guys are interested, I can send you over to him. So you can see without getting in on it if you guys want to. Put uh, the ice fan over here. Alright. Alright, now this is not the ice man he's making. This is Sideshow's ice man. But what I did was I did the paint up to kind of get an idea of like what he wants the factory to kind of do. Hold on, hitting the wrong one here. So. So that's the Iceman he's uh, making. Um, so instead of going clear resin on it, which would create a number of issues, uh, we're trying to paint up an Iceman that kind of like looks like old school Iceman. Uh, but that's not like clear resin. So this is kind of a uh, pearlized interference blue with some sapphire alcled, oh no, spastic blue in it. So the idea is to create like an ice look with paint on that statue. Because uh, the idea is we're going to send this item out to the factory so they can match this paint up. Because it's not even produced yet. So what do you guys think? You like this idea for like an ice man? Where he's kind of like shiny but he's not like clear resin where it's gonna break on you so uh so it is a whole bunch of interference colors um the only problem if you run too much interference colors on a statue you start creating a yellow tint. Uh, so I was using a lot of this sapphire blue from Spastec over the pearlized colors. Uh, and then I went in very lightly and added blue shading. So that's the idea of the paint up for that statue. No bits for you, Ryu. No bits at all. 
So, like I said, he's producing the statue. Um, if anyone's interested, you could just contact me somewhere, either on my site or uh, Instagram, and I can send you over to him. But we, uh, a friend of ours had this Iceman statue he didn't want anymore, and we decided to paint this one up to send to the factory so they can sort of kind of get the idea of what we're looking for. So you can kind of see in different lighting, it kind of pops. But if you look in certain lighting and angles, you'll get like that yellowish tint, but it kind of feels like ice. Uh, it's just something different. So if you put him in a shady area, he sort of... Alright, like I'll turn the lights off. We'll see how it looks. So if you have like a dark area, he sort of does kind of pop a little bit. The pearls and stuff capture it. A little bit here and there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not green. It's it's maybe it's your screen, um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a very light blue and stuff. So that's the Iceman like concept of the color paint up. Uh, but like I said, that uh, is this cracked. What the hell? I don't know. But yeah, so that's what we're gonna send out to the factory. So it's kind of like a prototype paint up, but not of the uh, statue he's making. So I figured I'd just share it with you guys, get some feedback if you like the idea, if you like sort of the paint up. Uh, and if anyone's interested, just like I say, contact me and I'll send you over to them. But, should be, I would like to paint up the original one, but it's not ready yet. It's probably just the color, it's probably like my lighting too here. You see it in one way, if you saw it on the shelf, you'd see it a different way. If anyone else comes into the chat later, I could always show it again and get more opinions type stuff. Alright, before we do this, let's do the hands first. Alright, so we're just going to use Spaztec Black out of the can because it goes on nice and smooth and hopefully this isn't clogged. No. Gonna put a mask on because you still get fumes. Alright, we're doing our base coat in black first, and then we're going to mix up black and uh, metallic together to get a little bit of that latex look. But we gotta let this coat go on first. Uh, 
I'm not a fan of spraying out of a spray can, but sometimes you just get a better feel and better, you know, coverage. But the cool thing with Spaztec, they do have the same paints usually in a bottle for the airbrush. So you can sort of mix and match if you can't get in a certain area. Instead of spraying like really crazy heavy in here, uh, you can use the airbrush, which I'll probably do a little bit first, just to make life easier. I gotta take power source, something is jumping on me. Here. What's going on? If you use Spaztec bottles, be careful. Uh, I have a habit of tipping these over uh, because they're so thin at the bottom and they're top heavy. So if you guys ever get these bottles, just be careful. I have a habit of doing it. Uh, Julian, no problem. Hopefully I said that right. Yeah, just uh, sharing the hobby and having fun. Alright, let's spray this, uh, this down.
ratchet instead of power cord. Yeah, it's just Silly Putty. The old fashioned uh, pink Silly Putty. Yeah, like they said, go to Crayola Web Store. They have a five pound brick of this stuff for like a hundred bucks. to do since most of the time Miss Marvel Warbird outfits don't have any blue tint to it we're gonna just keep it like black latex so simple mix up a bottle in the airbrush of some black with a hint of the metallic give it a misting and then after that we uh, gloss coat it just gonna let it sit for a few seconds more before I start messing with it where did I put the hands? Yeah, if you buy the five pound brick of Silly Putty, uh, it'll last you years. And that's all I use the mask. I don't use tape or anything else. The only problem is uh, the more you use it, the more gunky it gets. So set up like a few containers of it. I can show you on the other camera. So, you know, fresh silly putty. Uh, this is the super old stuff and this is semi new. It may look different, but You know, I, I go. I had this stuff for years, so it'll last you. Uh, I was using Spaztec. I've been uh, I've been messing with the Spaztec paints a lot lately. Um, even though they're lacquers, I think they're lacquers. Are enamels? Um, yeah, enamels and stuff. They're not bad. Uh, they go through the airbrush pretty well as long as you clean them. Uh, I don't use them to like blend skin tones or anything, but for when I do like solid stuff like this or clear coats and, and stuff like that, I like that. It's uh, it comes out pretty well. Now, there will be some, you know, when I split the silly putty later, there may be some my cracking. But if you're good enough with like not over spraying at the edges, it won't be as bad. Uh, no, uh, what happens is the silly putty, you see how there's all this paint in the silly putty? If you just start messing with it, it breaks it all down and then it's like you can reuse it so you can reuse the silly putty over and over and over 
Um, it will react to really harsh chemicals though, so if you use like Tester's Dull Coat on it, it melts the Silly Putty, but if you let it dry, like in an hour, it goes back to normal. Um, I know some guys that have Silly Putty for 10 years and are still using it. I just like fresh Silly Putty for certain projects, because if, uh, say you do a candy coat on an item and that candy coat is kind of tacky, and it's not cured enough and you put Silly Putty on there and you pull it off, sometimes the paint pieces might grab it. Uh, but if you just get used to it and know what you can and can't do, Silly Putty works out amazingly. And if you get the five pound brick, um, you can use fresh Silly Putty on certain things that you don't want to risk getting any of the stuff. I've been doing this since uh, 2003. I think I bought Silly Putty, a five pound brick in like 2005 or six. And I think after since then I've only bought three bricks in all these years. And I paint every day and every week, so unless you're painting all the time, one brick will last you a lifetime probably. Alright, so while that is drying, Hey George, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a couple people in the hobby that have told me personally not to share my secrets, but a lot of the stuff I've learned was from other guys in the hobby, the old school guys, so it's not like they're really secrets. If you get out there and do your research, you'll find it. Babla, I appreciate it. Yeah, well, I, I just, I just share what I do. I'm not really trying to be like a, you know, a tutorial channel or anything. I just kind of share my hobby and my projects, and that's pretty much it. So if you guys learn from it, that's that works.
I mean, if they uh, if they open up the kit shows again, you know, like Wonderfest and Jersey Fest and stuff, if you guys hit those shows, you'll learn a lot at them. You'll get a couple guys that are more than well, well willing to sit down and, like, you know, explain stuff to you. And you will get some people who really won't want to bother with you, but for the most part, most of the guys are pretty cool. Gonna get be hard to get underneath this hair area. Yeah, bad blood. I've uh, I've heard it all before from people. Um, I mean, sadly. When I got into the hobby and I went to my first Wonderfest, which I think was 2008 or 2009, um, I experienced some of the older guys who didn't want to bother with you. You know, they didn't really want to sit there and give you their secrets or whatever the case was. But there was plenty of other people that would actually talk to you. and So you, you get both sides of it. I mean, the other thing, too, is just because somebody's new to a hobby doesn't mean that they're, you know, it's, uh, if you brush them off down the line, they might be the best in the hobby, you know? I mean, I experienced it. When I first got in, none of the big boys wanted to bother to talk to you. And then after you're in there long enough doing stuff, then they want to talk to you. Thinking that back in the day was a smaller, more night tight group. Like I always said if you just worry about yourself, you keep doing your own thing, you let your work speak for itself, and that's all you really need. Don't worry about what person A is doing next to you, just keep brushing up on your skills and have fun. The other thing too is uh, I think a lot of them, you know, didn't go to art school, they do it as a hobby. So I guess I was young and I kind of knew a lot of color theory right away. So, I don't know. I don't care, really, to tell you the truth.
<laughs> yeah, that's right, Ryu. Nothing I could do. Man, you are definitely going to get me in trouble. Good thing I'm not on Twitch. <laughs> it's an inside joke between me and him. I like this song from Arctic Breeze. It's one of their better ones. If anyone's wondering, I'm just doing some of this trim work. I think I want to mask it and give it a nice gloss coat layer. Painting with the paintbrush, you get too many strokes. So it would be easier to mask it. But we can do the eyes, the lips.
Uh, hey Storm Shadow, no, it was a uh, custom. I wish I had a picture of the Psylocke it was from, but I'm pretty sure if you go on eBay, you might find one. It's a Scott Campbell fan art Psylocke statue. Uh, two, three, four. Um... I don't think of it. I think my thumb and fingers are so locked up in the position all the time, it doesn't matter anymore. I think the main issue is my shoulder. Uh, if I, you know what it is, is I have my elbow on this chair, so I'm not sitting here like, when I airbrush and you have your arm out like in the air, that's when stuff bothers me after a while. So you just got to know to take your time, get a good position, stuff like that. But once the old age starts sitting in, then yeah, I'm in trouble. Which is pretty much getting there. Well, I've been using these uh, headgear for getting close because if I don't use it, then, my, then I get tired. Then again, I never want to go working on a computer again for someone, so I'll make this work.
Yeah, I saw uh, Street Fighter V uh, Rose. Um, the model is not bad, but I still think uh, Street Fighter IV models was better. Because uh, they kind of they tried to mix the, street, the realistic alpha in Street Fighter V, and I don't like it. Um, I, I like Street Fighter IV's look because it was a little bit more realistic to her. Kind of felt more like a comic book character. No, I don't play Street Fighter V. After, uh... After that test at New York Comic Con, I knew I never was going to play that game. It's funny, uh, every time they release a character, uh, it's the best character in the game. Everyone's playing the character, everyone loves the character, everyone always says that was always my main character. And then when they nerf it the next season, they'll never play the character again. I do miss Street Fighter 4 though, I think that was some of the best years ever. Yeah, Dan's awesome too. I just wish the, the Street Fighter 5 engine wasn't so bad. Well, whatchamacallit, Street Fighter uh, 6 was canned. Internal testing supposedly was so bad with the game that they canceled it. It's not a good sign. So what was the rumor was that Street Fighter 6 was so bad that they canned it and they let Ono go or he's not working on it and some lady's taking over the uh, Street Fighter 6 project now. That was the last I heard. I mean, I had a lot of arguments with people saying that Street Fighter was better, blah, 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 but by me, when Street Fighter 4 died, all the local tournaments, all the online tournaments, all the stuff just ended. Like, Street Fighter 5 just, like, killed the whole franchise. I mean, Street Fighter 4 tournaments were everywhere. Comic stores, game stores, people's homes, halls. And then it just went bye bye. Well, I hope that Street Fighter 6 is good. Then I'll, uh, I'll have to redo my sticks and uh, get ready for it. I didn't even get a, a PS4 or a PS5. I skipped every console.
I don't think it was the story mode. I think it was just more the engine. I mean, I, I was at the New York Comic Con, and I played on a controller, and I did the craziest combos ever, and I was just mashing buttons. I saw this little kid. He was like four years old. He mashed buttons to beat this guy who was like trying hard to play. And it just felt the engine was just so dumbed down. I just felt like it's just not worth investing into it. As much as people cried about Street Fighter 4, people stepped, come, kept coming back to it. Yeah, it was hard and people bitched and cried, but people kept playing. Hey, what's up, Raz? I think uh, game companies have to stop listening to the crybabies. Just make the game like the old days and let it sell on its own. When you have a small group crying for it, it ruins the whole game for the rest of everyone else. So that's what happened with Street Fighter 4. Uh, they were always doing these stupid internal testings at arcades. And you just had people crying about how hard it was and they just kept dumbing it down. King of Fighters looks amazing. I absolutely love the artwork. I think that they nailed the whole entire graphic on it. Uh, I love watching the uh, animations, the designs. Just uh, not invested into our uh, consoles anymore. Yeah, Raccoon, I used to play Warcraft 2. I liked the classic, I liked the way it used to be, and then after they kept killing the game over and over, every path, every uh, expansion, I quit. Raz, you're still having issues with that stuff? Hate to see you waste all that money on resin. Good on that. Sony bought Evil, huh? Well, that's uh, that's bad news. Well, that's good that you're not, uh, the materials are, because usually it's the materials that are shot, but if it's the printer, I don't know.
I can't watch Evo anymore because the Street Fighter, there's no hype in the game anymore. It's the same move over and over and over. At least in Street Fighter 4, you had a, it was still the same combos, but it took a lot of skill to pull them off. And you knew the person had skill, you know? Alright, we're going to mix some black paint with some metallics, and we're going to give this a little bit of a sheen to it with that so it looks a little latexy. If you guys ever use this Spaztec uh, metallic, it once you open it up, it doesn't last that long. Like, you might have a few months of it. Kind of sucks. A little bit goes a long way. If your uh, primer is running, uh, it could be the resin. I know it's a 3D printer, but if that's got some kind of like not cured resin, your primer is going to run. I, I, I've had that issue plenty of times with uncured statues. If you put primer on it and you get any kind of running, even when you're first spraying it, you might run into an issue. Uh, try to get that uh, Dupa Color adhesion promoter first. Uh, try and spray your item down with this first because this kind of like dries up fairly fast and then hit it with primer that might help.
Well, that's the thing. It doesn't matter if the resin is, uh, if you, even if you sand the layer off of it, if it's still uncured. Like I said, I haven't tested 3D prints enough to know the ins and outs. Um, I just know from past experience of regular resin, so... I'm just brainstorming with you. Might not be able to see it too well, but there's a hint of uh, metallic in there. So once we gloss it up, it should look a little bit better. I don't want to go too much metallic. Once this dries a little bit, it'll go fairly fast. We'll give a coat of this 90109 acrylic uh, enamel. Uh, it's a fuel protector. Um, supposedly when you put this on RC cars and you get those gas power cars, this is supposed to protect the paint. I find that spraying it on the statues, you get a really protective coat and it doesn't really crack anything. So we'll see how that goes. Alright, so we gotta clear that up. We gotta do the bolt, the belt, the base, and then the eyes and hair, and then attach everything. So I think we get pretty close far. Just to be on the safe side, sometimes if you think you overspray on an area, you can just sort of double check. Yeah, the Spastex stuff seems to not like crack or break too much, like uh, if you're going to do full blown crazy enamel thick paint. So it's really not that bad. 
then again, I really didn't spray crazy heavily on it either. Usually you get an idea like here. See, it's you can feel it cracking, but it's not as bad. The only problem is when you spray out of the can, you can see all the wasted paint back there. But it goes on nice and smooth. I think what we'll do is we'll try one arm, see how well this works. Yeah, see, I like the way you get a really nice shiny. That little hint of metallic in there helps it, like, feel like latex, then just spraying gloss black on there. So it works out pretty well. So we're going to start putting this into the shelf to dry. If you use car paint on this, like the dupli color, I think it destroys it, cracks it up, so you gotta stick with the same brands. Although when I put it into the cabinet and close the door, if I open up the next day, it's going to have a fumes coming all over the place. Yeah, try this Spastex colors. I like them a lot. I. Uh, I'm not really a fan of using enamels and lacquers, but it seems like the Spaztec stuff is a little bit more friendly through the airbrush and also through the cans. Whereas like uh, testers enamels, I can't stand those things. But some people love them. Now, doing a clear coat like this onto here and then not uh, gloss coating it might be an issue so what I'm thinking of doing is maybe let this dry a little bit longer we'll mask off this symbol because it, it gets dry we'll do the pale gold on it because I know the pale gold won't crack on me and then I could gloss coat everything so if I'm really careful I could try that because sometimes if you gloss coat and then try to paint over you might have an issue worth a shot so this is a pale gold I've tested this stuff on here and it works fine so you know we might as well try let's see if it works just uh, kind of sucks when you seal something and you can't do it over
Hey, Gloden. Um, it was Spaztec Black, and then I mixed uh, in the airbrush uh, some of the Spaztec Black with a little bit of the metallic Spaztec. And I got sort of a metallic y black, but not overly metallic y. If it makes sense. It's, there's a hint of it in there, basically. I'm trying to think, should I. Maybe it'll work. Maybe not. Alright, so if I do this bulk now, I'm trying to debate if I should just do the bolt later. Yeah, we'll just do it later. I think I'll just ruin it. Not worth the risk. So let's just kind of gloss coat it and then I'll uh, worry about it later. Are we getting a flickering from this camera, or is it both cameras? Yeah, I hope this thing isn't crapping out on me. But, uh, yes, yeah, so I think what I'll do is when I'm ready to do this bolt, um, I'll mask it off and I'll spray it down with that adhesion promoter, and that'll help bond it a little bit better, and then maybe gloss coat it again or leave it flat. Maybe leave it flat, it might look a little bit better than trying to gloss that as well. We'll see when we get to it.
So I always do ID cows last. Because trying to put silly putty on those will rip them right off. Let's, uh, let's do her mask, and then we'll pull off all the silly putty, and then we'll move on to Daphne. It takes a while to get the use of the decals. Um, you know, I when I first started using them, uh, it took me a lot of tries. So, and even to this day, I still kind of mess up once in a while. So don't. That's why it's good to buy a couple sheets. They're not that expensive. Yeah, do, do the decals last, the very last thing, because nothing sucks more than positioning them and getting them perfect, and then putting silly putty over it and ripping them off. I did that a few times. Uh, I don't use the Salva set or any of those sets until the decal is on the eye. I found that that Salva set stuff with the trying to get it onto the eye kind of screws up your paint if you use acrylics. Um, so I just use water. But once I get it positioned and the water sort of dries, then I put a drop of the Salva set on there and then it kind of flattens the eye for me. Um, I just find that the Salva set screws up my paint if you start messing with it. Then again, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but the guy from Archer just said use water. Uh, yeah, Raphael, yeah, I'll have a video up on it probably, uh, I don't know if I'll have it up on Sunday, but maybe during the week next week. That was, uh, that was a mess. Even in the video, you can hear me kind of like out of breath because lifting that out of the box and maneuvering it was, it's a nightmare. Yeah, I don't understand the design on that one. Like, why would you have this huge upper body with a hollow leg holding him? It didn't make any sense on that one. 
At first, I thought it was just a simple repair, because uh, I'm doing it for a guy locally. And once I actually started messing with it, I was like, I gotta rip this leg off. Because the rod twisted and came down, so I couldn't just glue it and fill it in. I had to sort of wiggle the rod out, saw the rod in half, and put another rod in. Yeah, he told me, literally, he put it on his uh, base, and then, like, he just came back to it, and it was, like, cracked and broken. Because it's, the waist, the waist on the Hulk is solid resin, but the leg is hollow. And the bottom of the foot had that much resin at the, like, the sandal. So, like, you have this whole entire leg that's hollow holding up the torso, which is solid. It should have been the other way around. The upper body should have been hollow and the leg should have been solid. I, I, I can see what they were trying to do with the rod, but it wasn't positioned correctly and it was just not a, uh, yeah, it just wasn't good. And supposedly that's a common thing for that Hulk. I mean, in person, the sculpt is not bad. I mean, I'm not really a Hulk fan, but... i just looking at the design of it more for engineering, which was... It makes you wonder, did, did Sideshow design it that way, or did the factory do it that way? You know? Had to be one or the other. Yeah, Ryu, if you, uh, I, I get a, I get an upper body workout just by handling these large items. When, uh, when the, the guy that was locally dropped off the Hulk and he brought the two boxes, one with the base and the statue, I was like, are you kidding me? So these two huge boxes were sitting in my kitchen and they're still in my kitchen right now. And I'm just like, oh, these boxes are getting bigger and bigger. I told him, I said, if he breaks it again, don't call me. But I did tell him though I added about three to four pounds onto the statue because of all the resin I put into it. So I told him don't be crushing any of your shells now. Like, it's a good thing I'm not into, like, large statues like that, because the two boxes alone, I'd have nowhere in my house to put them, other than maybe the, uh, sort of the attic in the garage. Uh, but then the boxes would probably melt or freeze in the winter, summer. And I have an attic where you have to crawl into. 
so I wouldn't be able to put anything like that anywhere. Not knocking big pieces, it's just that personally I don't have room for them. one-third Hinata. I'm getting that one-fourth from Spec Fiction, but a third? Uh, I don't know. I think the only one-third I'll buy would be a Power Girl from Prime 1. I think that's about as far as I would go with one-third. Or, if a Pop Culture Shock made a one-third Rose, but we know that's not happening. So... Uh, yeah, Golden, I know a lot of people rent storage bins, you know, storage places for their boxes. Uh, but I couldn't add that onto, you know, there's no way I could afford that. And the sad thing is you have to take care of your boxes. You can't resell your items if you want to resell down the line without the box being in good condition. So a word of advice, never ever leave your boxes on concrete, even if it's in the storage bin. Concrete does not absorb moisture, but your box will, and you will get mold in your box. Put it on planks of wood or something. Yeah, the Sasuke looks sick. I'm debating on the Naruto one that's uh, where he's in sage mode holding up the or Saragun, whatever, uh, shit, the whichever one, the one when he was fighting the six pass of pain. Yeah, Golden, you just need a <laughs> a barn or something for all your statues and boxes and stuff. I was almost tempted to get the uh, Prime 1 uh, Superman, uh, Cyborg Superman. Absolutely love that statue. I mean, I'm not really even a fan of like the Cyborg Superman, but that statue just was, it just felt like it came right out of the 90s. Guys need to go tweet Elon Musk so all my Bitcoin skyrockets so I can get all this stuff. Tell him to keep promoting everything. Yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I like one six, uh, you know, scale, I like one fourth, one fifth, one third is just like, reserved for that one character I could probably put in the house, um, but yeah, definitely one fourth is kind of my favorite. guys but my car is a gray car but it's green right now 
<clears throat> Been taking Claritin all week. Hey butterfly. Yeah, Miss Barbell's uh getting there. Got all the outfit pretty much done on the black at least. Do the mask now. And then maybe next week uh finish her up if I can. Yeah, that's why I've been sending you pictures of all the Naruto pieces. I would love to buy every single one of them. But... I'm not going to gloss the mask. I think leaving the mask sort of the way it is fits a little bit better. Because you figure that's all super shiny. Uh, we'll leave the mask sort of satin, I guess you can say. Hey Stagger. Yeah, I'll be around. Gonna work on Daphne after I uh, do this. So this uh, Spaztec stuff's a little tiny tacky, but nothing serious. So, kind of get away with it.
So what I'm trying to do is split the paint. Instead of just ripping it off, because then you'll get flakes, you sort of kind of break it at the line where it's at. So you get a cleaner pull when you take it off. I mean, I'm digging into it, but I'm not digging into it where I'm, like, killing the statue. Just sort of breaking the paint at the edge. So if you ever have issues with silly putty pulling up, try and do this method. So invest in some dentist tools like this. 35 dollar tool, 28 dollar tool, take care of it, it goes a long way. And what I'm doing is, like, I'm looking closely and I'm sort of scraping some of the excess that's kind of flaking up. So it's just a matter of taking your time and just getting used to it. Now what I will do is I will let it dry a day or two and if there is any flaking on the edge you can run like your finger or a tool and pull off the flaking. So that's why I do all that black trim work before I mask. It's kind of my easier way of masking items. Now the other thing too is Spaztech you might get some much on your fingers so pull it like this so you don't get it onto the paint just kind of pull it away yeah like see I wasn't paying attention here it'll come off So what you want to do is, if you get any stuff on your fingers, it comes off like so. Nice. I like it. Nice and shiny. Alright, so there is like a little flaking, let's see, it's a little flaking like right here. So if you let it dry or you run a little brush over there, it comes like off. If your paint's dry. If, you, if you're trying to do it while it's still tacky, it won't work.
Tedious, but if you want a nice, good, clean line work, just take your time. Cool thing about Spaztec stuff is it's way more durable than the acrylics, but it's also a nightmare to fix spots if you didn't mask correctly. So if you miss a spot over here and you sprayed the Spaztec on it, then that's a mess. Hey rug, uh, not that clean. Uh, I still gotta let it dry and then sorta get in there and pull any flaking off. I mean, any, I think any painter out there, if you get your magnifying glasses on, are gonna think that the line is not that clean. But I'm always trying.
All right. Now, because the legs are so close together, I didn't want to pull this silly putty off and then pull this one on and all that paint get over there. So, sort of know where you're pulling your putty. So you kind of go this way and then sort of kind of do this. And then sort of split this, trying to make sure none of the paint hits the skin. So we got flaking a little bit, but if you kind of go here a little bit, sort of clean it up best you can. But we'll let it dry a little bit and the flaking should come off a little bit easier. I didn't gloss coat this it should come off a little bit easier because it's not as thick There we go. Looking pretty good. So all we gotta do is let that set up. Uh, worry about the hair. And then uh, put the eyes in. I put her on the statue now, but her neck is still too uh, wet. So I uh, wanna let this cure up a bit. a little bit this thing is falling apart get an idea of how it would look there we go we'll leave you on the the booty shot for you guys there while I get set up for Daphne
Alright, I'm gonna hit the bathroom real quick, grab something to drink, and then we'll start working on Daphne's neck. All right, back. Um, I think she just went to an SMN store or something and just got some latex outfit. This is old school, so. All right, so as far as Daphne goes, uh, I attached the, the head this week, but I dremeled out all that stuff because she had a... A weird setup for the cape so I had to take a lot of that down uh, let's see if I can find that picture So that's sort of what we're following. It's kind of almost the same position in a sense. So what we'll do is we'll mix up some A's. I mean this head, yeah, this head's kind of tilted compared to that head in the picture, but usually whenever I try to redo a body part, I try to find some reference on the uh, 
somewhere. Alright, don't need a hell of a lot of Aves. Just enough to... Uh, way too much. Uh, that should be good. Well, I just use DuckDuckGo for my main browser. So... Whatever I find on there, I just use. Now, I don't really have to go too crazy with all the neck detail because uh, it's going to be covered by the scarf anyway. But I at least want to get a basic neck from what was there, because it was mostly uh, set up for the uh, the cowl and stuff. So the way she's working is, I got to do a lot of the body cleaning. I got to get the head and neck set up, uh, and then we can start. And I got to get the hand set up, and then we can start working on the outfit. And then the hair will be last. Um, what one fifth scale? All right, got our eaves all all set up. So let's gonna have to do this over the head. Start off, let's uh, jam a bunch of E's into all these gaps. Alright, so shoulder blade here.
screwed.
No, it's not over yet, raccoon. I'm just at least getting the basic shape going. Um, done a few necks in the past, so I kind of got an idea. Just a matter of just looking at your uh, artwork and trying to copy it. Of course, there's got to be some sanding done because uh, it's got to be tweaked a little bit. Like I said, a lot of it will probably get hidden anyways, once we get the scarf on. That's one thing, whenever I work on these statues, I'm always trying to study the other person's artwork. Where they uh, put the muscles and all that good stuff. You know, and the other thing too is one, you know, women don't have Adam's apples, but men do, so you gotta try to make sure you don't sculpt an Adam's apple there. I mean, they have them, but it doesn't really pop out. Hey design, how's it going? All the way in France, huh? What time is it over there actually? Ugh, you went to McDonald's? Ugh. I haven't had fast food like, well, McDonald's and that in years. Don't eat that stuff. Oh, wait. Aren't you, uh... I don't know. I... Never mind. Don't... Don't eat fast food. Unless you're in another country. Yeah. Not in America. Oh, well, glad you enjoyed the videos. Twelve twenty, wow.
Ah, uh, you could have got better fries somewhere else. You should have just said you wanted to get the Daphne toy, then I would have understood. See, if you're in France or you're in uh, somewhere else, like, what is it, like Burger King and McDonald's actually sell your real meat? Whereas in the U.S., you don't know what the hell's in that stuff? I'll stick to diner food or a good old deli. No fast food, gotta stay away from that stuff. Yeah, everything's different out of the U.S. If you guys from out of state or out of the U.S. come to the U.S., don't buy the fast food here. Stay away from it. Go to your pizzerias, restaurants, diners, stuff like that. You don't want the fast food here. A drive through pizza place. I mean, most pizza places here, you walk inside, they got like pies already ready to go for a couple slices. You just don't just walk in. Everything's getting expensive now, so be careful what you buy. The same size can, less inside of it.
I don't think I've had McDonald's since uh, 1995. I was a Burger King person back in the day. But I cut out all fast food back in 2009. Yeah, I saw all those videos where none of that food rocks forever. Yeah, Steger, it's, it's, um, inflation in here is kind of going up pretty bad, so... I went to the supermarket the other day, I got a couple things, and... Before I knew it, it was like $30, and I was only buying stuff for like three days. So... And everybody was panicking over that gas line incident. I went into the auto parts store to pick up a new head bowl for my car and some lady came in flipping out saying that she needed a gas can, we're having a gas shortage. And the guy looked at her like, no we're not. But... Honestly, if, you know, if we ran out of gas and there was a shortage, I would just hop on the bike and go to the shop, right? And if you're out of business, you just, you just tell the company saying, hey, we have no gas, you just can't make it to work. I don't know why people are flipping out. If we went through a pandemic, I think we can handle a gas shortage. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Another war year. We didn't have wars for a while, but now... I'm expecting uh, gas to hit about probably $7 by July. That's my prediction. Let's see if I'm right or not. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I guess I take it for granted. I'm in Jersey, so we have a refinery here. So by the time it hits $7 for us, it'll probably be like 14 for you. So right now it's still around like, what, three bucks?
That's a good excuse. Can't blame, uh, can't blame him for trying. Just say the world's ending, it can't come to work. Uh, yes, you can use A's on Transformers if you want. Uh, just uh, score the plastic before you apply it. Like if you if there's um like you know say you want to sculpt onto this with Aves, it's really smooth. So what you want to do is at least kind of like you know, like score it up a bit. You know, just give it a little bit of rough texture, and then put the Aves on it, and it should stick a little bit better. You can use Aves on plastic, metal, wood. Uh, everything. Just make sure it bonds to it, that's it. I mean, there's times where, uh, if I'm, I have, there's a hole on my wall, and from, like, drilling a hole for a picture, and I'm too lazy to get the spackle out, but I'm working on with Aves, I'll throw the Aves in the hole. Yeah, Ryu, you can use it on your bitch. You can also use it on your taxes as well. Well, you figure uh, the pandemic is going away, so we have to have another crisis, so it'll be the gas crisis. And then in the winter, we'll have the pandemic. And then next year, we'll have another gas crisis. I think that's just the way it works now. For me, the crisis is supplies. It's hard to come by certain items. As long as they keep producing statues and they keep sending it to us, I think uh, we'll be fine. Well, they just finally said that uh, if you were fully vaccinated, you could do whatever you want now. But uh, I'm expecting the world to end sooner or later.
like I said earlier, tell Elon Musk to promote Bitcoin some more. We need this to go to the moon. I need to retire early. Yeah, if ADA goes up, uh, I'd be happy. If ADA goes up to a crazy amount of money, I won't be doing statues for anyone anymore. <laughs> I'd just be making an army of my own stuff and that would be it. So don't you guys start voting against me. Well, I, I did uh, I did stock up on some extra age materials because uh, there was a sale the other week because I have a funny feeling some of these prices might hit age so I said let me order an extra back and throw it in the refrigerator just to be sure yeah ADA seems to be uh, really talked about um, seems like it has a lot of potential. Um, I'm hoping. Uh, Terrell, I don't think so. I think it was only a, uh, well, what is it? It's May? I think it was, uh, an April only sale. But you should sign up on their newsletter because whenever I get their newsletter, sometimes they'll have the code in there. And if I feel like it, I ordered then. Basically, their code is just like saving on shipping. But any anything that you can save on is better than not saving. Although I do know their products went up because uh, usually it didn't cost that much when I uh, bought it last time and it went up a lot. So I figured let me order now while I can. Yep, need my bits. Nothing I could do. I think a lot of this neck will get hidden with the hair, but... At least we got the majority of it there. Yeah, I, I was surprised that uh, ETH went up that high. But then again, when I was like, uh, when I kind of got into the whole Bitcoin thing, it was like, what? I think it was $4,000 a coin. 
Who knew it was going to go up that much? But, I would say Bitcoin is going up way more than stocks these days, so... I look at it this way, you could blow your money on uh, lottery tickets or going out to drink on a weekend, throw a couple bucks on some Bitcoin and hope for the best. Yeah, I think when I got the Aves now, it's around 40, 45 bucks now on the Aves site. Uh, they don't have the red on sale anymore, so they must have been out of the batch that they were trying to get rid of. Um, they have some other stuff on sale, but nothing I would use. It was good all those years buying a four pound thing of Aves for $25. It was red, but it was 25 bucks. Actually, uh, I got some of the Dogecoin the other day. I figured, what the hell? The tanks of tanks. If it goes up, then I buy a statue or two from it. Who the hell cares? The way things are going on in these days, uh, I wouldn't pass, put it past anything to make you money. Hell, Marvel cars are worth money now, so everything's ass backwards. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Glowden. It's, uh, 
it's weird. Stuff I could never give away is worth money. Um, things that you think would be worth money, no one wants. Certain comic books I couldn't give away, I've been selling on eBay for, well, good money. Um, all my toys that I could never get rid of back in the day all went on uh, eBay. Yeah, if you actually go to a lot of sites, gold and silver is like gone. You can't even purchase gold and silver now. I mean, you can, but it's it's like the second it's in, it's gone. And when I say that, I mean the lower end gold, silver, like, you know, the ones that are like more like for cheaper. Not like the huge bars where they're like 30k a bar. Even some statues, if you guys have actually watched eBay at all, certain statues have dried up and you can't find them anymore. And ones that used to you couldn't give away are actually starting to rise in price too now. And they're selling. So if you guys got some old collectibles you've been holding on to and you don't want anymore, you might be able to get rid of them now. I think you missed the boat on the pop culture stuff. I think they all just tanked, but you never know, they might go back up. I mean, they were hot for a long time. I think Pop Culture Shock Street Fighter stuff died out when Street Fighter 4 died out. I think that's kind of around the time when no, everyone started unloading them all. Yeah, I, I didn't understand why people thought they were gonna like retire on those Street Fighter statues from Pop Culture Shock. Um, I, I think when I did that Shinakuma one, um, I, the, for that guy, he said he showed it off on Facebook and somebody offered him like six, seven thousand dollars for it, and I was like, why the hell would you not sell it? 
I was like, I don't care. I mean, I did the work for you. And if you want to sell it, you sell it. I mean, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, you could buy another one and have another one done. But... Raccoon, did they sell well for you? Well, I think, Terrell, that's also part of, like, uh, when I think it was Jerry was selling off the company, so there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. All I know is I got good money for the Akumas I bought, but I bought them back when they were brand new, and nobody even heard of the company yet. But that's also the time I lost my job and I was like, you know what? Oh, I gotta go. Yeah, the XM stuff was hot there for a while. Because uh, I remember, what was it? The Jean Grey, uh, you know, Jean Grey uh, Phoenix statue, the first one. That was like what set them off. But then after that, it seemed like, I think somebody even traded a car for that statue, but I think it was like a beat up car or something, but still. Ah, uh, no, we're just talking about, well, I, there's fanboys everywhere, Terrell. That's not, you know, that's gonna happen no matter what, but. Everything goes in phases, because I remember Claiborne Moore was the hottest thing, Bowen was the hottest thing, Sideshows, you could buy Sideshows and flip them for crazy amounts of money for a while with all the exclusives, uh, and then what was it, um, what other companies, the Gentle Giant, Sucker Punch Girls, I remember those were the hottest things in the world. Um, so every company goes through phases. We haven't, I don't know, well, I'm not really into the Prime 1 as much. I like the Prime 1 statues, I think they're amazing, but I don't know if they've been, like, super hot like the other companies were back in the day. Um... got the neck where I want it. A little bit pointy, but I'll kind of sand that down a bit uh, to kind of round it off. Alright, let's 
see. So, there's a spot over here on her knee I don't like. So we gotta fill a little bit in. Well, Terrell, th this happened actually, I don't know if you were around for the Bowen error. When, when Bowen was top dog, um, they could do no wrong. And then when that sideshow started popping up, there was a lot of like wars between people, sideshow and Bowen people. It was, uh, was kind of funny. And then that all died off, so now I guess it's the XM sideshow people. My prediction, it's going to be the going to be tweeter head versus somebody else next because if you're looking at the stuff tweeter heads doing really amazing stuff so uh, keep an eye on them hey Ren um I never really did anything from scratch I sort of messed around with it back in the day but the way things happen is I just kind of Kept taking commission work for customs and uh, paint ups and repairs, so it's kind of like what I just do and I enjoy. And even if I was the skull from scratch now, I think uh, there's just so much people in the market right now, it's crazy. So I guess I found my little niche and I'm kind of enjoying what I do. Because if you go on Instagram, there's like, every day there's a new three uh, digital sculptor popping up. And they are absolutely amazing. Okay, yeah, so Terrell, if you came in at the end, there was a lot of, it was mostly on statue form. That's kind of where I kind of got started. And there was just lots and lots of sideshows. This, Bowen is that. You know, it was just, it was basically what's going on now between sideshow and XM fans. And then there was uh, some Claiborne Moore versus Bowen stuff. Uh, but nobody ever really said anything about the DC Direct stuff. It seemed like nobody cared about them. Diamond Select stuff was just... Uh, that, that stuff was horrible. Good sculpts, bad factories. Factories always mess those up. I never really paid attention to the Rocky's Vault. I thought it was just more for, uh, like, sign stuff. Uh, I like Kotobukiya stuff. I think, uh, the stuff they're doing is good. Um, I like the Bushudo stuff. Um, I just wish they would pump out a little bit more. I just I think it's just the scale is I'm, I'm not really into the one six stuff too much, so I don't really. Uh... Go into it too much. But Kodo does some good stuff. But nobody ever really kind of. Fought about their stuff too much with people. Hey Orlando, there's uh we're just kinda talking old school First Wars. Who is the best uh company?
Well, DC Direct, from what I understood, this is what I heard, but don't, you know, don't, I don't know if it's actually true. Their philosophy was, it doesn't matter that we're not making money, but the more stuff, that, the more of our characters are in the comic store, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind philosophy. So all the stores are flooded with their stuff and it's cheap on Amazon, but they closed their doors, so DC Direct is gone. So, I, I don't know, I kind of was a bad business model. I don't know if it's true or not. Although I like the bombshell line, but... Yeah, I like the Iron Studio stuff. All their sculpts are amazing, but it's one-tenth, so I'm not into it. It'd be kind of cool if the, but then again, the problem is you can't, everything is licensed. So if Iron Studios does a 3D digital sculpt of a character at 110, they can't produce it at 1 4 or 1 6 because that's under a different license. And if they don't have that license, they can't do it. Which sucks. ARH Studio? Aren't they gone? I thought they closed shop a while back. I mean, I saw them at New York Comic Con, they had some good stuff, but from what I understand, not a lot of the stuff ever came out. I thought they closed shop. I don't know, I haven't, I haven't seen an ARH piece since uh, New York Comic Con 2015, 14? Something like that. I like the DC Direct stuff. Uh, I think they were making some really cool things, except um, it was just too much of the same character over and over. I didn't know they were still going. Had no clue. Alright, we're gonna try to get the rod in this hand lined up. Oh, this Batwoman that's over here? Uh, I'm not doing anything with her, I just like the sculpt. I, uh, whenever I sculpt something or I kind of want to see some anatomy or like wrinkles, I just like looking at the item. I got it free from somewhere. I forgot where I got it, so I just throw it on the desk. I actually like that sculpt a lot, that's why I left it there. Not sure who sculpted it. it just uh, it's just one of my favorite sculpts. I mean, I don't care for the character. Just a uh, really good sculpt.
Hold on a second. Let's see if this... If she's going to be holding a Scooby snack in her hand... How would it... So, let's... It would be like this. Okay, so that should line up pretty well. If you're looking for garage kit DC stuff, I don't know. Uh, because uh, most of that stuff is on like Facebook. But if you want to just buy a DC Direct item and chop it up and repaint it, they're all over eBay. A lot of these high-end garage kits from like Ownage and uh, all this other stuff, uh, they're like all on secret Facebook groups. So hey, I can't really help you with them since I'm not on Facebook. Good, so I think this uh, neck is looking pretty good. I think we're uh, pretty good with the neck. Sand it down a little bit another day, clean it up a bit. Got the collarbone back. Yeah, Orlando, if you can um, go on Facebook uh, and try to find these statue groups and somehow get into them. You might be able to find uh, Some of this stuff, but sadly, I don't know All I know is somebody will contact me and they'll be like can you paint up this kit and they send it to me But by the time they send it to me, it's probably like long sold out Here's my filler item. Uh, didn't have a chance to sand down her belt, but since I got this chunk of A's left, kinda fill in this head a bit. Just chop this off. Yeah, Orlando, I, uh, a, lot, a lot of the stuff I do, um, it's either for people, it's either random stuff, uh, so a lot of the stuff I uh, build and paint, sell off. This, uh, this Daphne that's back here is for uh, YouTube series, and then she'll be done with the Velma on my YouTube channel. Uh, the Miss Marvel that I'm working on back there. That's going to be up for grabs probably down the line. And then right here is an anime kit. I'm turning into Shigo from uh, Kim Possible for just filler. Maybe uh, I can get her ready for hair one stream. Lots of projects.
so what I'll need to do is sort. I gotta sand down her arms. And once I sand down the arms and set it up, I can sculpt the hair on her. Um, Raccoon, uh, the nose art girl kit is coming along slowly. I did the wooden floor for her already. Um, and I have to build the, uh, whatchamacallit, the easel. And I gotta find a picture. But that's a personal project, so it's going slow. Yeah, I don't know anything about Kim Possible, but uh, I see it all over DeviantArt, so I figure what the hell. It'd be fun to see an anime kit, more adult looking one, as the character for fun. Why not? And I don't like the hair that came with this kit, so I'm going to sculpt my own hair. Yeah, the wooden floor came out good. Uh, I like the way that looks for the nose art girl kit. Um, I just got to figure out this uh, easel. There's a lot of small ones on eBay, but they don't fit the character's theme. So I gotta build one from scratch. I figure once I get the easel done and I get the picture, we'll put a part two video. And then after that, probably paint video for part three. See how far I could get over the next few months. Still catching up on commissions. Every once in a while, which I would consider a sick day or a vacation day. I'll do stuff on my own for my own personal work. Wash out my tools before they dry up on me. I, I do Raz. Every once in a while I'll uh, usually like a Saturday is kind of my day. It's either doing random stuff to go out and you know just get out of the house or maybe do some personal stuff. But when I have extra material I do some random personal stuff that's on my shelf that I'll show off down the line whenever I get to them. But stuff like this uh, going slow but it's getting there ah. 
I think uh, once I catch up, like really, really catch up on stuff, I could get back on track. All right, I'll, uh, I'll show this one more time for anyone else who's uh, just joining in the stream. If you're just joining the stream, uh, just to give you guys an idea, uh, the Iceman that's on the the pic on the screen is a uh, statue my friend is producing. But he wanted me to do the prototype paint up, so we he doesn't have the actual statue yet. So he gave uh, another friend of mine gave me this uh, sideshow statue, and we did some test paints on it. So instead of painting the item. Uh, you know, instead of doing it like clear translucent resin and it all breaking and shipping, uh, he's trying to go more old school. So what do you guys think of like a paint up on that statue like this? So this has kind of got like a uh, pearl white, interference blue, and sapphire. It's got like this uh, really cool sapphire uh, blue from uh, Spaztec. And then I did some blue shading on it, so it's kind of like old school Iceman, but it's shinier. I don't know. So what do you? So if anyone that hasn't seen this in the beginning of the stream, what do you think? So the idea is uh, he's gonna we're gonna send this this item off to the factory, but they'll use this paint application on this picture on the screen. Yeah, I, I understand that transparency would be the way to go, but the problem is, is uh, a lot of transparency, clear resin stuff is very, very fragile and breaks. And, uh, you know, he's only doing like a small run of this. It's not like, a, you know, it's just like something he's always wanted on his shelf. So, going this route is safer plus it's more old school Iceman because he, he's very into the old X-Men and looking at like the Bowen designs clear Iceman and stuff like that he does not really a fan of it so now maybe in my camera it's not showing there is some shading there but the idea was not to go overboard because when you turn him inserting lights that blue hits so if you go too heavy shading, you probably would start losing it. It's kind of like the theory behind it. But factories over in China might have a better paint application than this. So they might be able to do a little bit better than what I could get here. Well... The reason why you see some yellow is because that's the interference blue. Uh, interference blue, and any, any interference has a, uh, like this interference colors, it sorta has like a yellowish, uh, like I guess metallic paint in it or something. So you get a little bit of that, but in person it actually feels like ice because if you look at ice, 
it's not completely white you sort of sometimes get different uh, looks to it so we're just kind of toying with the idea so far yeah I am using my shitty camera too but like I say in the lighting now it's brighter, but if you put it on the shelf in sort of like a darker area, that yellowish kind of pops out a little bit more. Um, but that's the interference. I'm actually going to take it to the barbecue tomorrow just so he can see it in person and kind of go over it. Uh, but we're just trying to hash out some details. Because you could go straight pearlized white and then do blue shading, but then you start to kind of, it's like just a pearled item. I'm trying to create like an ice out of paint. But like a comic ice, I guess you could say. Now, there's a barbecue with statue guys tomorrow, and uh, I'm just bringing it up to my friend so he can see it as well. Uh, just so he can see it in person, because he's not, he doesn't live by me, so. I, I mean, if anyone's interested in the Iceman statue on screen, uh, not this one, but the picture, and you want to get in on it, you can contact me. I could send you to his Facebook group. But for right now, we're just kind of... Just trying to get some feedback on it, just so people could see it in real time. You know? So it's kind of... You know, you start to see it like yellowish over here, but then as you turn them, it goes away. I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. Just, uh, just trying to get some feedback. do is I could bring it to the better camera and we can show you there a little bit. So this is the better camera. Uh, but like I said, you can sort of see yellowish on him. But then again, it's pearls and interference, so seeing it on camera versus in person, it's it's a different world. Because pearls and interference and metallics are very hard to capture on camera. But I'm just trying to, you know, trying some new things. Yeah, it, it's not yellow tint. That's the thing. It's not yellow. It's the interference. But, I don't know. If you kick on the light, and then it, it'll... You know, then it really, you can't see crap on it. So that's, that's how I would paint an ice band. If I had to paint an ice band for someone, it would be something closer to this, I would think. Uh, I'm thinking comic book, you know, comic book Iceman, old school, white, with a little bit of the blue shading, you know, think of like, what, the Jim Lee era? Yeah, maybe tomorrow when there's a bunch of people there, they can look at it and I can get a little bit more feedback that way.
you know, because over in China, they might have like a really cool uh, interference white paint with blue tint in it that looks amazing that you can't get in the USA. So that's a possibility. Yeah, butterfly, sort of like uh, old school Iceman, you know, uh, Spider Friends Iceman, uh, old uh, '90s Iceman with like uh, Jim Lee, where he they uh, they had them all like a bright white, and then it was like very light blue shading in the the coloring. That's kind of like the goal we're going for. Yeah, so I'm, like I said, I'm just getting feedback. I'll get some exposure if anyone's interested in the ice bin on the picture uh, to get in on the run. Shoot me in a message, uh, Instagram or email or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully, uh, you know, we'll see what this looks like once the factory sort of gets together. Yeah, we, we might end up putting a little bit more blue uh, once he sees it in person. Uh, Cause I could take all the pictures in the world, but it's not gonna look the same as seeing it in person. You know, and my lights might be washing out the blue, for all I can tell. Cause I have a lot of light in my studio, so it's really hitting all the pearls. But I appreciate the feedback. Uh, it's good to, you know, just show a couple eyes on, you know, certain things, get a little bit more exposure. So I'll let them know that some people thought a little bit more blue, some people saw the yellow. Uh, worst case scenario, we can uh, look up some uh, enamel or lacquer paints out there that might have some kind of crazy blue pearl type thing. And see if maybe another paint might work. So this thing might get painted 10 times before we send it out, I'm not even sure yet. All right, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 sh I'll show them some feedback and, uh, you know, maybe uh, if I still have it by next stream and if anything changes, I'll pop it back in. We'll see. That's good. It's good to have the live stream get some live feedback from people so <clears throat> yeah but the only thing with the the shift colors I looked at um, they there's nothing from white to blue that I saw it was all like blue to red or blue to purple or blue to yellow uh, there wasn't really like a blue and white that I found that I could actually get that was in stock because a lot of paints are not in stock that's the other problem uh, so I'm gonna have to we'll see what happens tomorrow and I'll get some more feedback and we'll go from there maybe uh, maybe there's another paint out there that we have to snag I don't know more stuff to figure out but I think we're uh, we're done for today we got the neck done um, hopefully by next stream uh, we can finish up Miss Marvel and then uh, I'm thinking we could start working on her outfit I don't know, Golden. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more research. I'm gonna have to talk to some people in the hobby. Maybe someone knows what I'm looking for. Not sure. But we're gonna end it here. I'm beat. I gotta get ready for tomorrow. Uh, thanks everybody stopping by, and uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, yeah, Terrell, there will be a video on Sunday. I'm going to post the repair on this uh, raptor statue that was hollow. And I'm going to put up the second part of Velma. i got to edit them in the morning. So, uh, see, uh, hopefully Sunday I'll have those up. So, have a good weekend, guys.